Okay, good morning folks, it's 11 o'clock, I'm just going to start the free online GCSE maths lesson now uh, on areas and perimeters of simple and compound shapes. I'll just quickly introduce myself, just a quick introduction, just so you know who I am. Okay, hopefully you can actually see me in the bottom left corner. My name is Mr. Smart and I will be hosting today's session. I'm an experienced maths teacher who loves trying to make maths as fun and as relevant as possible all whilst providing you with the maths knowledge and skills you need for your exams and beyond. And for today's session, just please make sure you have the following to hand just nearby, a pen, a pencil, a paper and a calculator. Obviously, you've probably got them anyway, but just in case if you haven't. And community rules, okay? Obviously, we're delivering an online session, but we expect everyone to treat everybody with respect. That's me to you, you to me, you to uh, everyone with each other and we take safeguarding very seriously so we expect to you know if we need to do anything we will take action if necessary I'm sure it won't be because I'm sure everything's going to be fine but just we have to read that out at the beginning okay so how are these sessions going to work well I'm going to start it's really simple so please don't think that the level is going to stay here it's not but this is just so you get an idea of how we've set this up so a sentence in blue means it is an activity for you to work on so, for example, if you look at below, it says work out the area and perimeter of the following shapes. The minute you see that a sentence is in blue, that's something for you to do. Second thing, anything written in purple or with a purple background represents a harder task. So, where you're finding the work easy, there will be things in purple that will be significantly more difficult. Point three, anything with a yellow box is an answer and we will then reveal the solution once we reveal the answer and it will all start to make sense so what I'd like you to do for a minute literally one minute is just to work those two out now I know it's very easy but it's just so you get the idea of the concept Okay, so that minute's up. I'm just going to move on. And you can see here, I know, I'm sure you all know the answers, but just to show you how the answer boxes are going to work here, I'm going to sort of recover them and uncover them just to make you understand how it's going to all play out. So clearly, the area of this square on the left hand side is going to be 4 centimeters multiplied by 4 centimeters. And when we reveal that, we'll get 16 centimeters squared. The perimeter here, yeah, 16 centimetres squared. Yep, yeah, 16. Thank you, monkey bars. That's correct. Brilliant. And the perimeter is going to be 16 centimetres, not 16 centimetres squared. Obviously, we've done 4 centimetres, add 4 centimetres, add 4 centimetres, add 4 centimetres, which gives us 16 centimetres. Let's have a look at the second rectangle. 3 centimetres multiplied by 10 centimetres will be 30 centimetres squared. And the perimeter here will be 3 centimetres, add 10 centimetres, add 3 centimetres, add 10 centimetres, which is 26 centimetres. Okay, so what I want you to do here now is just take a quick look, a very quick look at this video clip. Okay. And as you can see here, this stage is actually a pyramid stage from Glastonbury, and all stages won't be rectangles or squares, they'll be more complicated shapes, and we're going to get to that in due course. Just have a little look at this bit. And if we pause here, what you can also see, these security people with the blue shirts on, they're guarding the perimeter of the stage. So one of the things I've been talking about at the beginning was I want to make maths as relevant as fun as possible. If you're organising a large scale event with hundreds of thousands of people or even thousands of people, hundreds of people, you need security. And the perimeter basically is where you're going to have to secure it. So everything we do from now on, I want you to think about performance areas and stages and events as we work through. Okay, sentence here in blue. K 
can you work out the performance area and the primitive perimeter of one of the stages below? Just one minute. I know it's easy, but we'll start to see where this is going. I've just heard there's a bit of an echo there, apologies, I'm not sure why that is. Okay, that one minute's up. Okay, let's have a quick look then. Okay. So perimeter is uh, performance area A, 2 centimetre, add 12 centimetres, add 2 centimetres, add 12 centimetres, which is 28 centimetres. And the area is 2 centimetres multiplied by 12 centimetres, which is 24 centimetres squared. I'm sure lots of you have got that one correct. And the second one, if you want to actually type the answers in as well, feel free. Okay, six centimeters, add four centimeters, add six centimeters, add four centimeters is 20 centimeters. That's the perimeter of performance area B, and the area is six centimeters multiplied by four centimeters, which is 24 centimeters squared. Thank you, Marion. Okay, that's the correct answer. So, you get the idea now. But what's interesting about this is what do you notice about the areas and perimeters of these shapes? So if you look at performance area A for a second and performance area B, what you should now start to see is that there's some similarities between the area and there's some differences with the perimeter. The area on both of them, Daniel, is 24 centimetres squared. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, thank you, Syrah. Yeah, so both the areas are the same, but the perimeters are different. And if you think about how you set a stage up, think about the security guards that I was just showing you in that video clip. Okay, if the perimeter is larger, you're going to need more security guards to patrol that perimeter. So, the area could be the same and the perimeter could be different. And now, you're going to have a go at working out these four performance areas. So, you should have a pen and pencil and a calculator piece of paper available. Stage A, stage B, stage C. I want you to calculate the performance areas and the perimeters. Stage D is significantly trickier. I've had to use a scale because the stage is so large and the scale is one centimeter is equal to two meters. And for this question, for stage D, I want you to leave your answer in terms of pi. Taylor Swift, on the top left hand side she's requiring a performance area of at least 32 meters squared and a perimeter of at least 25 meters. Can you work out which stage she'd perform on? Would she be able to be performing on stage A, stage B, stage C or stage D? Katy Perry, would she be performing on stage A and so on? So you need to link each performer to a stage. Okay, I'll give you five or six minutes to work through them all and then I'll go through the solutions. Off you go.
Okay, just to clarify, some of you have already started to get some of the answers by the looks of it. It looks like Taylor Swift, uh, Lauren said it should be stage B. That would be a correct answer, Lauren. So if we can keep working through the others as well, that would be brilliant. About three or four more minutes on this one, folks. Okay, so this, some of these shapes are trapezium, there's a trapezium there, a parallelogram, I'm sure you all know the formula, it's not particularly difficult, as I said, a circle, I'm sure you know the formulas for those, to work out the circumference, which is obviously the perimeter in this case, and also the area, we will go through them in a minute, but this is a good recall exercise to see how much you can apply that knowledge. Okay, one more minute and then we're going to go through the solutions to these. Okay, let's go through these one by one quickly. If we look at stage A, can someone type in what the perimeter for stage A would have been, please, quickly in the chat box. Okay, anyone going to put that answer in for me? Okay, I'm going to have to quickly go through it. I need to keep moving. So 10 meters, add 10 meters, add 10 meters, add 2 meters, 24 meters. I'm sure you've all got that one right. And the area is 10 meters times 2 meters, which is 20 meters squared. Okay. Possible mistakes and misconceptions, make sure you use the correct unit. A lot of people would put meters there rather than meters squared. So just keep that in mind. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, trapezium. Slightly trickier. Often forgotten about. Students often forget the, the formula for this one. So here the perimeter is going to be 6 meters, add 5 meters, add 5 meters, add 10 meters, which gives us 26 meters. And the area of the trapezium. Uh, and this is interesting, it's half A plus B times perpendicular height. But what's important to remember here is that A and B are the parallel sides. So here, the parallel sides are 6 metres and 10 metres. And that's why I've replaced A with 6 metres. I've used substitution and I've substituted 10 metres for B. So I get a half of 6 metres plus 10 metres multiplied by 4 metres. And if we think about this, 10 metres add 6 metres is 16 metres. 
the half of 16 meters is 8 meters and 8 meters multiplied by 4 meters gives me 32 meters squared. Okay, just remember when you're doing a trapezium, A and B represent the parallel sides. Okay, stage C is a parallelogram, and you can see here it's the perpendicular height is the key thing, that's as five meters. Often students may use the six meters as the height, and it's not the perpendicular height. So be careful of that. The perimeter is six meters, add seven meters, add six meters, add seven meters, and the perimeter is 26 meters in total. Uh, anyone got the area for the parallelogram for me in the chat box at all? Okay. 7 meters multiplied by the perpendicular height, which is 5 meters, gives us 35 meters squared. Okay, so now we're on to stage D. And remember, stage D was put in purple because it is slightly trickier. And Here's where we need to just make sure we're really concentrating. So there's a scale involved in this question as well, and the scale is one centimetre is equal to two metres, and it also asks you to leave your answer in terms of pi. So just moving down here, circumference of a circle is actually going to be the perimeter in this case, and you probably know two formulas for this. One is pi times diameter, and the other is two times pi times the radius. And either one of those would work, but I'm going to go with pi times diameter. And we can see on our circle that our diameter is 12 centimeters. So pi times 12 gives me 12 pi centimeters because I've got to leave my answer in terms of pi. Lots of people start typing in the calculator and rounding, but it's clearly said put your answer in terms of pi. And we go down. Why have I doubled it? Why have I changed 12 pi centimeters to 24 pi meters? Well, I've done that because the scale is one centimeter to two meters. So a lot of students will get to 12 pi centimeters, think, ah, oh, I've cracked it, I've done it. But actually, you've got to remember to apply the scale, and the scale is one centimeter equals two meters. So it should be 24 pi meters. Okay, area of the circle. Okay, in this case, pi times r squared, pi times radius squared, and I've done the conversion here straight away in this example. I've said, okay, half of 12 centimeters is six centimeters. I've then applied the scale. So six centimeters converted using that scale is gonna give me 12 meters. That's where that 12 meters has come from. I've applied the scale here. So 12 meters squared is 144 meters squared. And I get 144 pi meters squared and I've left my answer in terms of pi. Okay, now lots of you, and I can't see, none, no, no wrong answers in the chat box to be fair, so maybe look, most of you got this right, but a lot of you might have got 72 pi meters squared for the performance area of the circular stage. In blue, so that's something for you to think about, can you think what may have gone wrong? Just as I'm flicking to the next slide, can you think what might have gone wrong? I've got an answer of 144 pi meters squared. If you've got an answer for 72 pi meters squared, what could have gone wrong? Okay, I'm going to go through what may have gone wrong. I'm going to leave the initial answers up here, and I'm going to do the area of the circle in a, a different way, just to show where, if some of you did make an error, where the error might have happened. Okay. So pi times r squared, we're still going to use the same formula. And this time I'm going to substitute half of 12 centimeters. In this case, that would be six centimeters. That would be the radius. And I've substituted that into the formula here. So pi times six squared. So that gives me 36 pi centimeters squared. And a lot of students there think, oh yeah, but I've got to apply the scale. I've got to apply the scale. So they do, and they double it. And they think, ah, oh, 72 pi centimeters squared. But that's not correct, okay? That last step is wrong. Why? And a lot of people think they understand this, but they don't really, really, truly get it. So let's just talk about it. What dimension are we working in? This is an area. So we're in the second dimension, okay? So what we need to do is we actually need to multiply the 36 by centimeters squared by two squared, not just by two because we're in the second dimension. That's why the power is 
power of two. If it was a volume, it'd be a power of three, etc. So what I need to do is I need to do 36 pi centimeters squared multiplied by two squared. And obviously we know that two squared is four. So what we're effectively doing is doing 36 pi centimeters squared multiplied by four, which gives me 144 pi centimeters squared. And if you look at it, that's now the same answer as when we did it this way. The answers now match. We know we're correct. Which way was easier? Have a think about it. I know which way I think was easier. The first way for me was a lot quicker, a lot neater. Didn't have to do the squaring part as I did in the second method. But I wanted to show both ways because that's where a lot of mistakes happen. Okay. So let's quickly go through this. Taylor Swift, she was going to have to perform on stage B. So well done. I know people got that one right. Katy Perry, it was going to be stage C. Ed Sheeran, stage A. And Beyonce, and she's got a big entourage, lots of dancers. It's a big act. She need a big stage. Uh, she was on stage D. Just to say here, if you left your answers in terms of pi, it would have been 24 pi for the perimeter. If you did round it, if you did turn it into a decimal and round it, it would have been 75.4 metres to one decimal place. And for the area, if you'd left it in terms of pi, it would have been 144 pi, which equals 452.4 metres squared, if you round to one decimal place. Okay, we're now going to talk about compound shapes. So compound is where we put things together. And I'm actually going to try and build these shapes in real time. So I'm going to take two of these performance area rectangles here. And I'm going to build a bigger stage. So what I've done here is I've built a bigger stage um, out of three smaller stages. And now I'm going to do the same over here as well. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do this in real time, actually. So I'm going to turn this one round. Okay, I'm going to copy, put another one on top there, and I'm going to place this one very carefully exactly in the middle of these two to make another stage. So we've got two new stages that are a combination of other shapes put together. Okay, and when I go through to the next slide, you'll be able to see this. Now, on the left hand side, you will be able to see the dimensions of the bricks or the, the performance areas that exist. You've got them here, okay, four meters and five meters. So what you know is, you know all of the lengths here. And likewise here, you've got the performance area of the slightly larger rectangle. I want you, it's in blue, to work out the area and perimeter of stage A and stage B, please. Off you go, obviously I'll give you some time to do that. Um, I'll give you say four minutes to have a go at both of those. Off you go, folks. Good luck. Now some of you will steam through this and you'll, you'll find this quite easy, so I'll throw in an extra bit of challenge for you. Okay, so the rest of you can carry on, it's the same stages, but David says that stage A can increase its performance area, and you'll notice this is in purple, and decrease its perimeter by making the adjustment shown. And the adjustment we're talking about is turning, rather than having a uh, just having these two edges, we've, we've put an extra triangle on the end here. And we, it, what David is saying here is that we can increase the performance area and decrease the perimeter by making this adjustment. 
And what I'd ask those of you that have already completed the first part to do, okay, is to prove that David is correct or prove that David is right. And that involves a lot more maths now. So we're starting to have to use different parts of the maths curriculum to solve this problem. Okay, I'll go through all of the answers in two or three minutes. Okay, it's good. We're getting some people obviously getting through this now and understanding where this is going in terms of the difficulty level. It can be cranked up, just you've got to give it time for the task to sort of ferment and, and get where it needs to go. Okay, another minute or so, because obviously different people work at different speeds, and it's the first one we've done. So I'll just give people another minute or so just to finish off their answers. Make sure you get the correct unit, folks, as well. Remember, we've been working on units all the way through, so make sure your perimeter's in metres and your area's in metres squared. It's an easy mistake to make. doesn't matter how clever you are. You can all make mistakes. When I was looking at my slides this morning, I'd made a few mistakes, and I had to, to change them slightly just to make sure that they were correct. Okay, let's start to look through these then. So what we'll do is we'll start with um, stage A and then we'll work through, do stage B and then we'll go through the stage A where we made the adjustment to prove that David was correct. Okay, and if we think about the area here, okay, the area is going to be 4 metres multiplied by 5 metres 6 metres multiplied by 4 metres and then another 6 metres multiplied by 4 metres because we have two of that rectangle and all we have to do is just be, be careful. 4 metres times 5 metres is 20 metres squared, 6 metres times 4 metres is 24 metres squared and then 24 metres squared again because we have two of those rectangles, add them up correctly and we get 68 metres squared. Quick look at the perimeter Okay, for stage A and what I tend to do here, and it sounds silly, I like to mark where I start. Okay, and a lot of people say, well, why do you do that? Just so I know where to finish. And literally, I'll just go around the outside from here. So 6 add 4, 10. 10 add 5 is 15. 15 add 4 is 19. 19 add 3 is 22. 22 add 6 is 28. 28 add 4 it's 32 and 32 add 4 is 36 and I know to stop there because I've just mark, made a mark so I know where I start is where I finish go all the way around the outside happy days that's good okay 36 meters you can see I've done that one and what I'm now going to do is do the same here for stage B so I'm just going to make a little mark where I start and I'm going to go around the outside 4 meters add 4 meters is 8 meters and then we've got this little bit here and what some students would do is they'd forget about this little bit here and there's also a little bit here but we can't okay we have to work out what that length there which actually is but what we do know is that this horizontal length here is 6 meters and this horizontal length here is 5 meters 6 meters subtract 5 meters is 1 meter and we know that those distances are equal we can see it so each one of these distances must be 0.5 meters or you could have put a half obviously okay and 
really in just in real time just to quickly put that together do a smaller font 0.5 that's so that little distance there is 0.5 meters and obviously it's the same on the opposite side so let's just copy that one and put it there so we can see and now now I've worked that out I feel confident that I can do the whole perimeter so I'm going to do starting at this point 4 meters at 4 meters to 8 meters 8 meters at 0.5 is 8.5 8.5 add 4 is 12.5, 12.5 add 5 is 17.5, 17.5 add 4 is 21.5, 21.5 add 0.5 is 22, 22 add 4 is 26, 26 add 4 is 30, and 30 add 6 is 36 meters. So you can see here as well, when we reveal that one, the perimeters are actually the same. But then of course, we had a perfect, a really good suggestion from David, okay, and what David said was, just bring that back into focus, David said by turning, by putting a triangle on the end here, we could increase the performance area and decrease the perimeter by making this adjustment, and this was a really good idea, and I'm going to prove it now just really, really quickly. The first thing to identify quickly, I'm sure you all did, but the first thing to quickly identify is that when you put this triangle here, there's a right angle there. The minute there's a right angle there, you know that you can do the base times the perpendicular height. Okay, so we can easily work out the area of this triangle, and that's what we've done for the area. If you look in purple, we've added on the area of that triangle. The base is three meters, the height, the perpendicular height is four meters, so it's half base times perpendicular height, and we've worked that out here. We've added it on to the original calculation, and that gives us an extra six meters squared. So the stage area has gone up from 68 meters squared to 74 meters squared after David's adjustment. What about the perimeter though? He said the perimeter would decrease by doing this adjustment. So let's have a look. So we know it's a right angle triangle, we've just been through that. What does that mean though? That means we can use Pythagoras' theorem. And the hypotenuse is x, and we know that x is going to equal the sum of the two smaller sides squared, so it's going to be x equals 4 squared plus 3 squared, which we can now work through. 16 add 9, 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, add them together, we get x squared equals 25. Clearly, the inverse of squaring something is the square root, so we're going to square root both sides, and we get the length x equals 5. What should be on the end there? The unit, so it should be x equals 5 meters. So how does that change the calculation for the perimeter? Well, let's just take a quick look. Clearly, we've got to take the 4 meters and the 3 meters, we've got to take those away, and we've got to add on the 5 meters for the high point use, because obviously these aren't going to make up the perimeter anymore. These two edges here are not part of the perimeter, they're not on the outside anymore. These two edges here that I'm just highlighting in red, they're not part of the perimeter anymore. It's only this hypotenuse in purple of five meters. So what we have to do is actually take away two of the original lengths, the four meters and the three meters, and add on the five meters. So now we've got a perimeter of 34 meters, which is a two meter reduction. Think about the security guards in the video clip. That means you have to hire less security guards. That means you save money. That's the sort of real life maths that you'll need to work out. So, just to prove that David is right in a more mathematical way, I've put stage A and new stage A next to each other so we can compare them quickly. And I've used inequalities. David is right because the area of new stage A is 74 meters squared. 74 meters squared is greater than 68 meters squared. And then the perimeter of new stage A is 34 meters and 34 meters is less than 36 meters. So David is correct. Those succinct sentences make, are how you score the marks. You don't need to write an essay. Sentence, really clear, concise, gets you the marks. And talking of exam type questions and marks, Here's two for you to have a go at, okay? One in green and one in purple, okay? Both from the June 2019 series of exams. 
and very similar to the work we've been doing in today's session. So I'm going to give you four or five minutes or so. Obviously, once you've done the green one, move on to the purple one, and then we'll go through those before we finish for today. Off you go, folks. Okay, a couple more minutes and then we'll go through these solutions. Okay, folks, let's have a look at the first one, the green one, which is as follows. I've sort of put the solution on the right-hand side here, and I'll talk you through where the misconceptions would normally be. What I've done is I've actually labelled everything I know. So I know from the question that this length here is 6 metres, this length here is 4 metres, this length here is 4 metres. Just literally that is told, tells me that on the question. This rectangle's been rotated 90 degrees uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise sorry and now I've got six meters four meters and six meters here what most students miss out if they're not going to get the marks is they miss out this two centimeters here okay that's where most of the mistakes happen 
And if you think about it, you can easily work this out because you know that this length here that I'm doing in red is six centimeters, and you know that this length here is four centimeters. So if you just imagine that line going up to where, okay, four add what would get you to six? Well, four add two would get you to six. So this length here must be two centimeters. That's where that's come from. And if you've missed that out, please make sure that you, when you get an exam question like this in future, that you make sure you work out that missing length because that's where most of the marks are lost on this question. So now it's a simple matter of adding these all together and again here I'm just going to follow my same strategy as before, I'm going to mark a start point, 6 add 4 is 10, 10 add 2 is 12, 12 add 6 is 18, 18 add 4 is 22, 22 add 6 is 28, 28 add 4 is 32. And just to say here, 11% of pupils scored zero marks on this and 44% got all three marks and that shows you that lots of students are just just under half got one or two marks on this question okay so how do you turn those one or two marks into getting all three marks well hopefully that will help you understand where most people go wrong okay i've only got a few minutes left so i'm going to try and get through this purple question as well quickly and i've put the mark scheme down here just to show you how it would be marked and this question here really does require you to read it accurately so it tells you that QR equals 10 centimeters and I've marked that on here okay if QR is 10 centimeters though that means PS must also be 10 centimeters because those are opposite sides so they must be equal it tells us also that the area of PQRS is 45 centimeters squared which is here so the only way I can get an area of 45 centimeters squared with one side 10 centimeters is if I multiply it by 4.5 centimeters because 4.5 centimeters times 10 centimeters will give me 45 centimeters squared. And you can see here that the first mark is awarded for exactly that process equals 4.5. First processing mark is, of, is awarded. It then tells us in the question that BC is equal to PQ. Well, BC is this length here. So if we know that PQ equals 4.5 centimeters, then we know that BC must also equal 4.5 centimeters. And as these two sides will be equal, AD must also be 4.5 centimeters. So we're almost through the question now. It tells us also that the perimeter of ABCD is 26 centimeters, okay? So what I've done here is I've said 4.5 centimetres, add 4.5 centimetres is 9 centimetres, taken that away from the 26 centimetres, and that leaves me 17 centimetres. Okay, if I halve that, that will give me the individual lengths of DC and AB. And again, if we quickly look at our mark scheme here, what were the marks being awarded for? Okay, and you can see here, looking through processing mark 2 times 4.5, well that's what we did there to get the 9, okay, um, and then here we've got 26, subtract the 9, and 17 divided by 2, and that gives us 8.5 or 8.5, and that's the accuracy mark at the end there, which I've just highlighted. Obviously, you can't go through the whole mark scheme, we're going to finish in one minute, but that's how the marks would have been allocated for that question. Okay, well done. What did we cover in today's session, objectives wise? Done a lot in a session now, very, very quickly, but we've linked it to AO3 problem solving type questions. But what we did we cover? Converting between units of measure within one system, including time and metric units to metric units of length and area. Think about all the meters squared to centimeters squared with a circle. Find the perimeter of rectangles, parallelograms and trapezia, compound shapes, recall and use the formula for the area of a rectangle, find the area of a trapezium and recall the formula, find the area of a parallelogram, calculate areas and perimeters of compound shapes made from rectangles. Okay, thank you very much folks, that's what we covered and hopefully see you at the next one. Goodbye.